Hello and welcome. We've done quite a bit already in this psychometric series. We've covered the topics of the absolute humidity ratio, which I'm using the symbol omega, not a W, Greek letters we're using, the relative humidity, which we're using the symbol phi, the uh, dew point temperature, we'll call that T dew point, and the adiabatic saturation temp, also called the thermo dynamic wet bulb temp, which is very close to the wet bulb temperature, read from a psychrometer. And we'll give that T wet bulb. But we have equations for a few of these in certain cases, but if we want is a numerical process or algorithm that can give us all of these along with things like specific volume, enthalpy, enthalpy, partial pressures, and possibly mu degree of saturation, a term we haven't covered yet, but we will in a second. So for example, if we're given the dry bulb temperature, or the temperature most of you are familiar with, and the wet bulb temperature from a sling psychrometer, and we know the total pressure, atmospheric pressure, of our location, how do we go about, what process do we do to get everything that we've covered so far? What if we're given dry bulb temperature and dew point temperature and pressure? What algorithm would you solve to get all these things? And if instead of dew point temperature you had relative humidity, how would you get all these? Well, what I'm going to cover in this series of video is the equations that will be necessary and the order that you'd like to do them if you're going to do this in a numerical process. And this will be tended to computer programming. So if you want to make a computer program where you give it certain things and you get these outputs, this would be how you'd want to do it. And the next videos are going to cover that and go over the relationships between all these properties. And again, with thermodynamics, if you have two independent intensive properties, you have fixed the state, which is why we can plot all of these things in a two-dimensional plot on a psychometric chart. And once you know an XY coordinate, two independent properties, we have the ability to calculate the rest of them. So for all of these starting points, we're going to have to begin by figuring out the saturation pressure as a as a function of temperature. So let me let me say as a function of temperature. Because you can look these values up, the saturation pressure for and we're talking about H two O, water, water vapor. You can go to a table of saturated water properties and you can look up a temperature and get the saturated pressure, but we would like a numerical equation to do that so that we can put this into a computer program. So two fellows by the name of Highland and Wexter, they came up with formulas for this and they're going to have very particular 
coefficients, and it's going to be this semi-complex equation, but very, very doable in a computer program. So, and we're going to be doing this starting in SI units. So we're talking about degrees C. Kelvin and Pascals. So we'll begin with the <clears throat> the saturation pressure over liquid water. And this is valid from the range of zero degrees C all the way up to two hundred degrees C, which is much higher than most HVAC applications, but we can apply it up to that level. And what they found as a relation is the natural log of the saturation pressure, and this is, remember, this is all for water, is equal to, and I'm going to jump to different coefficients right away. This, this is nomenclature. I'm taking this from Asherite Fundamentals. We have C8 divided by T plus C9 plus C10 times T plus C11 times T squared plus C12, I'll put that down here, plus C12 T cubed, and then they throw a little curveball here at the end, C13 times the natural log of T. small computer program and what's important is that this T is an absolute scale so this this has to be in Kelvin absolute temperature and what you'll get out here is you can obviously you'll need to undo the natural log operation so you have to take E to both sides here and you'll get a saturation pressure in Pascal. Poor handwriting. So just so you think, just so you know what this actually looks like, if so I if I made a mistake, there's actually more significant digits here than I initially put. And it's important because you're starting to get some terms that when you start adding these higher coefficients and things like this, these extra significant digits make a larger and larger difference. Now if you have a condition where we are actually below zero degrees C and you are you have a situation where you are over a plane of ice, we have a different relationship with different coefficients. And so let me grab that. That is here. And this is from negative one hundred to zero degrees C and we have this relationship with these coefficients. But what's important to note here is that we now have a very explicit formula where I'm taking T and I can map it into a saturation pressure without using a chart by just plugging into a formula. And so that's very useful to us. And that's going to be the first step in our journey through calculating all these psychometric properties. So see you in the next video.